Hello painters and welcome back. Today, another acrylic pouring experiment. We are going to try this one. This is the new DecoArt Clear Pouring Top Coat and it's designed to be a top coat especially for our poured art product projects. Let me read to you on the side what it says about this product. Create a high-end finish with this one-step pouring top coat. Dries to a lacquer-like high gloss finish so that's very good uh, as far as i know this is only available in gloss so if you like a matte or a satin finish those aren't available it's just gloss ideal for canvases wood panels and other flat art surfaces directions very important do not shape because if we shape we get bubbles in it and those will end up in our finished result pour over the dry painted surface Tilt the surface for even coverage and drain off the excess to prevent pooling. Smooth out the sides with a palette knife or brush. Place at a 45 degree angle and allow to air dry overnight. Um, and we can do uh, a second coat if we want a thinner, um, a thicker finish. So this is what it looks like. This is the 64 fluid ounce size. And you may remember these two tiles that I used the pouring medium. This was the Deco Art pouring medium. This is the one that had no silicon. This is the one that had silicon added. So I'm gonna try the pouring top coat on each of these and I'm also not gonna clean off the silicon. So we'll see what kind of result that we get, um, whether it's gonna give us a resin-like finish where we get those little voids where the, uh, the top coat doesn't work with the finish. Now in terms of how much finish to add, I've used these little cups. These were the same cups that I used with my paint. So I know that this gave me enough to cover the tile with my paint and a little bit that kind of ran over the sides, but I didn't end up with too much on my paper. So it's about the right amount. However, I've seen other videos on this project, uh, on this pouring product, and it seems really quite thick. So thicker than the paints and a little bit harder to spread around. So we will see what happens. I'm gonna put it on in real time so that you can see how long it takes the product to spread about. Um, and hopefully I will be able to complete one full tile with this amount. I'm just gonna pour it into the middle. And if I get too much, actually I'm not gonna use the whole cup because it already seems quite a lot. It seems like it's spreading. Now, of course, I live in a very hot climate. So anything here is automatically warmer and more liquid perhaps than other places. So I might expect it to, um, to move around and cover a little faster than for some other people. So I'm gonna tip it over the sides, whoops. Hopefully not waste too much and catch any extras in my cup. And then we will see how we get on. So you can see that it is white and that's kind of useful because it shows you straight away where the product is covering. And you can also see where it's thicker or where it's not covered so far. There we go, last corner. And I'm just catching it in this little cup. So we'll see at the end how much we've got left on the piece of paper and how much is in the cup, and therefore approximately how much I needed for this tile. Okay, we're done. So I know it says use um, a palette knife or a, a brush, but I'm just going to run my fingers along the sides pick up any drips from underneath the tile, make sure that corner is covered. I've got a little bit here, so let me pick up some of my drippings. I'm gonna dab it on the side here. There we go. So in fact, I ended up with quite a lot more of the top coat left over than I was expecting. So I've got a little bit down on the paper there and also, Make sure that's level for the time being. If we look at my cup, I've got a fair bit left over in the cup there. So I didn't need the whole cup. In fact, what I will try to do is use the, well, it's less than a half, but I will pour this on here and we'll see how we get on and whether I can do almost two. So remember, this is the one that has the silicone on. So let's throw that all on there. It's not as much as I poured on that one, but we'll see if I can get the whole thing covered. Get my finger in there, get all the dribs out. Don't want to waste anything. As with all um, paints and pouring products, you know, they're kind of expensive. So you don't want to leave anything unused that's gonna end up in your wash bucket, wash bucket, if we can 
use it and use therefore less out of our bottle. So I've got less on this one this time, so I'm expecting it to now move around not as quickly as it did before. There we go, there's one. And what I've got on my hands, I'm gonna scrape back on the edge there. Let's see how far we can make this go. Okay, so I'm tipping it quite an angle because it doesn't move very quickly. There we are, what's going off there? I'm gonna pour over here, pick up these bits. So it's definitely um, thicker than the paint, moves a lot slower than the paint. So this one you can see now I've got a lot less and it's moving slower. So I've got a little bit more control. There we go. I think that's good. And this last corner to go. And again, I'm gonna scrape what I've got on my fingers. No point keeping it on my fingers. If I can get it up there on the tile instead. Last corner to go. I don't really want to touch the surface because I want to leave it unadulterated. I want to leave the surface untouched by my fingers, ideally, so that we can see if we can get a nice finish on it. There we go. Let's save some of these dribbles again. I'm tilting it pretty almost, um, almost up right now to cover in this last little bit on this corner. There we go, nearly done. You can see it just going over the sides. I've got a little bubble there. There we are, pop the bubble with my nail and it's done. Okay, so let me get my fingers around these sides. I'm just taking the stuff I've got that's run underneath. I'm just making sure the sides of the tile are covered. And I think it's liquid enough that, you know, it's kind of self-leveling and whatever anyway, so I'm not gonna end up with fingerprints on the sides. So that cup in fact did two. I've got some on my paper. I've got a little bit left in this cup where it ran off. So I'm now going to wash my hands up um, and then I'm gonna bring over a tray so that we can rest them at 45 degree angle. So if I zoom you out a little bit now, excuse the lights there blaring on the, glaring in the sides, you can see what I've set up. I've just got a couple of plastic cups and I've got one of these metal racks, um, a spare old one from out of the cooker, and I've set it at an angle. Now I'm going to set the tiles on here and the idea is that they will sit there, so not quite a 45 degree angle, I probably need to put a little bit something extra underneath, and any excess of the pouring finish will now drip off so that we end up with a nice even finish on the tiles. I might have to just perch that on the end just there. So the reason I've got them lifted up is obviously the excess is going to drift um, to drain off the surface and onto the paper underneath. And if I have the towel touching the paper, then we'll get this um, area where it's actually gonna stick, I think. So I've lifted them up so that we've got a little gap underneath and I can already see the excess is dripping off. Oh, I've got a little blank corner there. I need to really do this with my spectacles on sometimes. There we go. And now I can see the excess is draining off. It says to leave them overnight, so I'm gonna leave them about 12 hours, and then we'll come back and have a look and see what kind of a finish we got, and actually see whether it made any difference with um, not removing the silicon on this one and just letting the pouring medium, um, the top coat, do its own thing. So I'll see you back here shortly. So here they are dry, and I have to say, they look really good. The, uh, just a single coat, and they're absolutely glossy, a really thick looking glossy finish as you can see with the shine of my lights absolutely flawless really really beautiful finish on them I would absolutely use this every time apart from one thing I need to work out some way of dealing with the back because I can show you the the top edge and the two sides absolutely fine but the bottom edge where the um, the top coat was pouring off I've got some drips, so I've got quite an uneven edge there, I think you can see, with all of the drips of the top coat, and also here where it had run back a little bit, and it was on the edge of the rack. So if it was on a canvas, for example, I don't know quite what you do. I think with, um, with these there, it's nice and soft, 
So what I'm going to do is just get my craft nice and I'll be able to take that off the edge of the tile just there. If we have a look at the example on the other one, this one is similar. This is the bottom edge and it's got like this little lip. It's soft and flexible and I'll be able to cut it off just fine with a craft knife and I think that's fine for tiles but again for canvases I think you'd have to work out some way of suspending your canvas so that you weren't going to get these little drips and edges on the back of it. Other than that the finish on both of them is perfect, including this one with the silicone. No problem at all with the finish on that. Absolutely the same as the one that didn't have any silicone in it. So I would definitely say if you want to use a top coat and you're having problems either with getting brush strokes or um, you're getting funny results with your varnish or you get voids because you aren't um, perhaps cleaning off all of the silicone before you put in your top coat then definitely this deco art pouring pour on top coat is absolutely perfect no problem at all using it on top of the silicone however if you use a lot of silicone in your paintings I don't know about that you'd have to check I only used a couple of drops per color for this one but still um, I think that's a pretty impressive result so I've been all around extremely impressed with this, uh, the finish on these. Just you need to work out some way, I think, in advance of how you're gonna suspend your pieces so that you're not gonna end up with the little drips on there. Um, maybe in the future we can experiment with drying things flat rather than drying them on an angle, in which case, you know, we wouldn't get that kind of problem, but we will see. So thanks very much for following along with this uh, review of the DecoArt Pour On Top Coat. It's been a very, very nice finish that I would be happy with using every time so give it a try if you get the opportunity to see it and I look forward to seeing you here on the channel soon and we'll um, do a few more painty and crafty adventures together see you soon